Hello students and welcome to our GIMP uh, video on layers. This is going to be a slightly more complicated explanation, but um, I hope that it will be very valuable for you. You're, right now you're looking at uh, an image that I made as a screenshot when I was trying to teach people how to get to their assignments in Microsoft Teams. And I uh, took a screenshot and then I added some other things to it. So I added the number one and the number two. I added a little red oval and then I duplicated it twice. I added a red arrow and then I duplicated it twice. And the layers, each of those is an individual layer. And so the layers window is over here on the lower right hand corner. So I've had to move my picture out of the way for this video. And what I want to show you is that each one of those layers shows up right here in the side area. And also each of them has an eyeball. So for instance, the number one, I can make it invisible by clicking on the eyeball. The number one red oval, I can make invisible by clicking on the red eyeball. The number red one arrow, I can make invisible by clicking on the eyeball and the same with the others, okay? They're not deleted, they're still there. I can bring them all back just by clicking on the eyeball, but it helps sometimes when you're editing uh, in order to be able to um, use each layer independently and to make each layer in, invisible. The other way I can kind of make those disappear is if I take this bottom layer, which as you see here, the bottom layer was the screenshot. I'll just put the eyeball to put it back. Um, and then you can move it up. So like down here at the bottom, there's an up arrow. So if I move that layer up to the top, it's now a solid layer on top that's covering up all of the layers underneath. That's not what I wanted. So it can, it can use the arrows to bring it back down, or I can just literally click and drag to drag it back down to the bottom. Either one of those will work. You can, um, if one of them doesn't work, if dragging doesn't work, just use the arrows. Um, another thing to do is to realize that every layer has its own size. So for instance, if I click on the number one, if I was gonna edit this, it has a boundary edge black and yellow that goes around it that shows you if I click on the red oval, it has a different size boundary edge. And if I click on the red arrow, it again has a different size boundary edge. So every layer has its own boundary size and that's not gonna show up when you export the image. So don't say, oh, I don't want that black and um, yellow uh, dotted line around my edge. It's not gonna show up. It's just there for you while you're editing. And if you go to the bottom layer, that I have, my bottom layer is the full size. And so you can see that the dotted line, the black and yellow dotted line goes around the outside edge of the image. Um, so that's just a little warning so that you're not panicking. Another thing is beside uh, the eyeball is the lock button. And when you lock things, you lock, you group them together. Um, and so by grouping those three things together, I can go to the move tool and I can click and move them as a group. I didn't want to do that, so I'm going to do Control Z, which is undo, and put them back. And I didn't want to group them, so I'm going to ungroup them. And now if I wanted to move just one piece, it would move as just one piece. So that's just a quick thing about layers and, and locking layers together or grouping layers together. Finally, uh, I want to show you that you can create a new layer. This is a new layer button down here. Um, sometimes people like to do that very quickly. Um, to add new things. Here's the little pop-up window for creating a new layer. The most important thing is down at the bottom, you choose whether you want the foreground color, which for me would be red. That's the color that's on top here. The background color, which for me would be white. White is just a standard color or uh, transparency, or there is a pattern one. I almost always use transparency or make it see-through and I click okay. And now you can see I've got a see-through layer here. And I'm going to, just to demonstrate, I'm going to use the red paintbrush. And you can see I've drawn all over that. Uh, that may not be what you want to do. So I'm going to control Z and go back. And I'm actually going to control Z and it will take away that layer because it, I undid it. I might want something different. So if I click on the red layer one, and I now I'm still in the paintbrush and I'm going to draw with my paintbrush, you can see here I'm drawing outside and then I'm drawing inside, it only draws inside the layer. So if you don't, if you didn't, if you didn't, if you thought that was just a random fluke, I'm going to go down to the oval layer, which has a different size. And once again, I'm going to draw my little red squiggle. And you can see that it only shows up inside the layer that is active. So it's really important that you track which layer is active or else you might be doing something on the wrong layer or you'll come to me and say mr rich i've been clicking and nothing's happening and i'll tell you well you're trying to color over here but the layer that you're on is only over there and so therefore nothing's going to happen because 
you're not on you're not activated you haven't activated the right layer finally oh i'm just going to undo that again control z uh, finally you might want to add new layers into your picture uh, into your image and so i'm going to show you that really quickly the first way and the most obvious way is let's say you've got a file you've got it downloaded or i've already got this file drawn um, I've got an arrow. I'm just literally going to go to the yellow folder, go and find it. And then when I find it, I'm going to click and drag into the GIMP window. And then I'm going to make this. Uh, and then there it is. So there my arrow has just appeared. It now says red arrows for this. I'm going to drag it down to the very bottom of my layers. And then I'm going to use the move tool. This is the move tool over here to move that arrow. Um, oops. That was not what I wanted. I missed. That's an example of not clicking where you thought you were clicking. So I'm going to make sure my mouse is right on top of the arrow this time and then click and say there's the create button um, if you want to create an assignment as a teacher. Students, by the way, do not have a create button, but this is how teachers do it. Uh, maybe I didn't want them to do that. Maybe I want them to uh, go to the general tab when they're done. Um, you can also do other things with layers, but that's not that's uh, another topic for another day. Um, the other way to get an image in is I'm just going to show you really quickly. Um, I did have a picture of a dog. There we go. So I went on Google and I typed in dog copyright free image. I have not researched this, so I really hope that these images are copyright free. I found this picture of these two cute little puppies. Um, when I click on it, I get the full version. So not the thumbnail version, but the full version. You can see because it has numbers down at the bottom. Those numbers are very small, by the way. Usually you want bigger numbers. But for this example, we're just going to go with smaller numbers. I'm going to right click and choose copy image. And then when I come back to the GIMP, I'm going to choose um, my bottom image, which is the largest size possible. You could sometimes choose a new layer. And I'm going to say edit, paste. So when I paste it, the really dangerous thing is it now down here says floating selection. Over here it says floating selection pasted layer. And this is moving the, the red and uh, sorry, the black and yellow lines around the edge of the of the uh, layer are moving. They're sometimes called marching ants. And also down here, the green new layer, the new layer button has turned green. That's a warning to you that you need to make this a new layer. So it's green. Click on the green. It makes it a new layer. I can double click on that and type in dogs. I could have typed in puppies. Um, and now you can see that the puppies layer is its own layer. And I can make it visible or invisible. I can use the move tool to move it around. Um, and I can use any of the other tools to make it shrink or grow. Also, layers can go right off the edge. So if you see what I'm doing here, the layers of the puppies, they've moved right off the edge. Um, and they're now invisible. The, the side parts are invisible because it's outside of the image. So you can have layers that are outside that don't show up. It must be frustrating for somebody when they discover that, but uh, I'm using it on purpose to sort of do act as a little cropping. So this is my super fast overview about layers. There's lots more about layers that you can learn, but this was a really uh, just quick overview. And I hope that this is helpful and helps you in your future projects.